Hi, I'm Melanie Dellis. And I'm Karen Lacey. And this is News Stories. Where we uncover the unusual histories hidden around us. Today's episode of News Stories is going to focus on the very interesting history of the straw. <laughs> Which, believe it or not, has a lot of interesting um, details behind it, both ancient and modern mm -hmm. historical facts. The oldest straw that was actually found, the archaeological find, was found in a Sumerian tomb, and it dates back to at least 5,000 BPE, which is before present. Um, so that means it dates back to 3,000 BC, which 5,000-year-old uh, straw is pretty awesome. It it's was an old straw. Gold, and it had uh, inlaid with lapis lazuli. Now so, that is my kind of straw. I figured. I like that. I really like that. I do like that. But it was probably for drinking beer. And you might think, why do you need a straw to drink beer? But you have to remember that the beer back in, uh, like the original origins of beer was actually this fermented drink, which it's still fermented today, but it almost had this consistency of a watery, soupy oatmeal. And it wasn't filtered. It wasn't filtered. Yeah. And what the actual, you know, the drink is at the bottom. And you need something to get to it so that you're not drinking all the stuff on top. Now, you could also eat all the stuff on top. And side note, mm -hmm. that's actually, penicillin was actually in there. So many ancient cultures who drank this kind of beer were actually getting penicillin. And you can actually see that in their bones and in their teeth. It's good. Um, they probably needed that desperately. Yeah. Uh, and it was actually a form of building the pyramids. They mm -hmm. used beer mm -hmm. with straws to um, actually pay for the pyramids being built. That's how they paid the slaves and the workers. And, I don't know about well, the workers. were all the, at least the slaves, they paid them in beer. And that was actually, you get a daily ration of beer, even for the kids. And it was super healthy. If you really think about it, it's like this oatmeal barley, depending on what mm -hmm. type of beer. But the straws that they gave everyone, was they weren't all gold. They were like reeds, no. right? They're usually like, you could do like reeds, reeds and things like that. And actually in South America, they use something similar for a different drink called yerba mate. Mm -hmm. But it has kind of the same idea where you've got this, this um, matter of sorts you need to get past. And yerba mate, it's these um, leaves. Um, that you're getting past uh, leaves and um, organic material, you're getting past that, getting to the drink at the bottom, um, and instead of like just straining it out, which I guess is what you could do, I think with the aroma it's really cool because it's actually a metal straw and it um, has this um, kind of like a spoon-like enclosure, spoon-like thing at the bottom. Um, it's kind of it acts as your filter, drinking it up just like the just like the Sumerian straw. Um, and again, it's, it's a waste you don't have to, um, drink all of the organic bits of the drink. We've seen one of those. We did. Actually, we came across one, um, a couple years ago when we were working, um, at a museum and we were looking, mm -hmm. I actually came across this, it was like a gourd and there was like a whole bunch of gourds. Mm -hmm. They were all decorated modern gourds, but there was this one gourd that's a little bit older. Um, it was a dark brown in color and there was this metal tube that was inside it. And I actually at first thought that they didn't belong together, but there was no number. And working in a museum, you never disassociate two objects because it might just be something that you don't know about. Right. Or maybe they're together for a different reason. Mm -hmm. Or they're just together because someone was lazy and just put a, a metal object inside a uh, gourd. Um, in this case, though, um, I actually just kind of was looking up something, and I think I didn't even think about looking at them together. I just didn't take them apart. I kind of left them alone. And um, at the same time, outside of the museum, I was actually introduced to this drink called Yerba Mate, and um, I really liked it. And I was actually looking into buying some Yerba Mate for myself because I'm like, oh, I want some at home. Where can I get it? Um, and is this you on the computer? This is me on the computer. Me on the computer. And then all of a sudden, this gourd pops up, and I'm like, oh my god. The gourd at the I, museum with the yeah. straw. <gasps> and so then I knew what it was, and then I knew what to look up. Yeah. So I rushed into the museum the next day, looked at it, and sure enough, mm -hmm. that's what it was. And eventually I was able to find its number, and it mystery solved. We also found a number of other ones soon after, and it was easier to identify and understand mm -hmm. what they were. I didn't have any clue what that was. And If you don't come across something sometimes, you're just not going to know. And that was a perfect case of, of that. And it was all because of a metal straw because otherwise that gourd wouldn't have looked too unusual to me necessarily without the straw. It was because yeah. the straw was inside it that it stuck out in my mind. But yeah, those are the two <clears> ones <throat> and it was all because of fermented drinks 
and needing to get past that with some kind of an implement. Mm -hmm. However, today, straws aren't necessarily used for those same purposes. Well, I mean, they're still used for... Well, we don't use it for beer so much anymore. Yeah, you don't it's use kind of it. Weird. And well, or the well, you can still the yerba mate and the actual the gourd and the metal straw. You actually can still see those, and people still drink those traditionally in that way. There's actually reasons for that, but right. Um, but modern straws, modern straws are a little different. In fact, they you know weren't gold and they they weren't reed. They were um, rye grass, pieces of rye grass, and it wasn't until 1888. When a man named Wol uh, no, what was his name? Marvin Stone. Stone. He was drinking a mint julep, hanging out with his friends, and he was using uh, a piece of rye grass straw, and that's how they would drink the, their drinks. But it would um, disintegrate because it's it's kind of like paper. You stick that into the drink, and it's going to get all yucky and kind of turn into this pulp in your drink, and it was um, irritating to him. So he decided that he was going to come up with something that wouldn't disintegrate, and he, he took um, manila paper and some a form of glue, and he made, he wrapped the paper around a pencil, and he formed this little straw and put the glue on the outside and then took the pencil out when it was dry, and he had this this... The straw and, and you know, necessity yeah. is the mother of invention yeah. and so many of the inventions that we have, so many objects that we use actually come from wanting to drink alcohol <laughs> or make <laughs> alcohol, yes. the production of alcohol, gathering materials for alcohol. Yeah. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes, sometimes it's all it's not. sometimes it's all about milkshakes. I'll explain this little number in a second. Please do. But I'm not sure why I have a green milkshake <laughs> in front of me. And I'm also not allowed to drink it. No, you're gonna you're gonna have to okay, just wait. Okay. Don't jump ahead too much. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's gonna be fun. So, um uh uh, uh milkshakes. In the nineteen thirties, skipping ahead from eighteen eighty eight, um, Joseph Friedman was in a Milk, uh, milkshake store. What do they used to call those? Like a, a soda a malt shop. A malt shop. He was in a malt shop with his little niece, and she was little, and she had um, a big milkshake in front of her and a straw in it. Mm. But at this time, they did not have bendy straws, and she saw. Oh, how could you not have bendy straws? Nobody invented it yet. He saw that she was. Oh, here, let me grab one. He saw that she was struggling because she was so little, and she was like this, trying to drink it, and she and it was spilling all over. So he took the straw out, and he put a screw inside the straw, and then he took dental floss, and he wrapped it really tight around the screw grooves, and then it wrapped so tight that it formed indentations, and that's how we got the bendy straw today. Like, that's what he, patent, he patented it. And that's so cool. I know, all for his little niece and the milkshake. But it totally makes sense, though. I mean, I don't know how many times... You know, my child, we were trying to give her something to drink, and if you don't have that bendy straw, she really struggles, yeah. you know, because kids want to drink like this. They traditionally drink, like, sippy cups and things like that. Yeah. Um, or they're just really short for some of those, like, mall shop right. drinks. So that's really that's really interesting. Yeah. Actually, something else. <laughs> I just love that noise. <laughs> so Sorry. talking about modern straws, though, there's a couple different uses that I've seen um, in other locations. For instance... There's actually a local restaurant in town that will throw them at your face. Um, just because you're like, oh, you want some straws? Yep. Um, there's there's a, a couple. There's actually a couple. Yeah. There's another one that actually um, uses them, and they'll throw some at you there too, but they'll also sit there and put them in your hair and make these really cool designs out of straws. Oh, I just did that to my girlfriend. It was her birthday, and she and her son and my sons were with us, mm -hmm. and I took her there. And embarrassed the heck out of her, and they made like this huge straw Love bow, it. like mini mouse in her hair. It was awesome. Love it. Yeah, and it um, Joseph Friedman's straw, his bendy straw, actually took off in hospitals because the nurses <gasps> saw That's, that would make sense. It would help with yes, the yeah, patients because patient, they're laying down, and how yeah. do you get that drink in there without like spilling it? And also, yeah. you can't really sit up sometimes. When no, you need to drink I mean something. it was it was perfect. It was perfect for them. But let's talk about. What I'm really excited about here, before these melt any further, these are um, shamrock shakes. Because we're, we're pretty close to having had St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, it's like the 11th or something today. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not and, sure if I'm just to tell you that about the and, podcast world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so one of the things that I really enjoyed about researching the history of straws was <clears throat> um, how back in 2017, McDonald's came out with a straw. Now, they, by the way, straw, S-T-R-A-W, stands for suction tube for reverse axial withdrawal <laughs> I'm not kidding that's what it stands for I would I would have maybe been like sucking drink suction tube. I don't know well it's close suction tube for reverse axial withdrawal okay I think that was pretty cool but anyway um so McDonald's came out with the shamrock shake back in I think 2015 I don't remember when the first shamrock shake came out but the I don't know if you can really tell but there's layers to it. Maybe not so much in mine anymore, but in Karen's, there's like, it's mint chocolate, basically. And there's layers of mint and there's layers of chocolate. And it has like six or seven different layers. Mm -hmm. And their idea was, and you stick the straw in and you could get all of this great yummy goodness all at once. All the flavors come to you at once. However, that is not what happened. First of all, the shake was way too thick. And so a normal straw, much like the Frosty from, um, what's that place called? Wendy's? <clears throat> yeah. It's very thick. You need a spoon, right? So they were like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? And then the second problem with the normal straw was that they it only allowed for, you know, when you stick the straw into a drink, you get the bottom. And it didn't get all the layers. So they actually made 1,000 of special straws back in 2017. <clears throat> and I tried desperately to find some on the internet. I looked everywhere. Not one person has them. And I'm sure someone does. It's I'd really, I went on eBay. Like, I went all over. I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I, excuse me, I keep clearing my throat. But, uh, so I made some for us. Oh, my goodness. So basically, the straw is, um, I took a bendy straw. Now, the straw is that McDonald's has is more like a J shape. But, of course, my bendy straw is going to be more like a hook, you know, because it is what it is but the the point of the straw is they have five holes in it instead oh. of the two there's a hole right at the bendy part and then there's two of two different sizes close to the end on the j bottom and then of course the part where you drink out of so the idea is and i haven't tested this theory out yet i know other people on the internet have tried it the theory is when you push the straw the j portion of the straw into your drink you'll be able to get at least three layers of three layers at a time. chocolate and mint into your mouth. So we're going to test this out right now. Okay, so here, put your straw in. Should we have, like, one straw that's, like, not to test it? No, I don't know. Do you want to? Yes. All right, well, give me a regular straw. We're going to put a regular straw in at the same time as the... Jay, don't stir it or anything. It is a really thick shake, too, and it has been sitting out for a while. Regular straw first? Regular straw first. Okay, regular straw. I just taste mint. Me, too. It's actually really good. <laughs> I haven't ever had one of these good mints. All right, let's try the new Shamrock Shake straw. It's <laughs> not working. <laughs> My regular straws in the way. Wait. Oh, yeah. That's different. You have to work a little bit at it to get it started. That works. I, I think good. good. I, I should like, patent, not patent, but like make uh, some of my own kind. And I got a completely different flavor. Completely different flavor. I, I taste more of the chocolate. Wow, interesting. And the mint. That is pretty cool. I didn't think that was going to work because a couple people on the internet were like, that's ridiculous. And... That doesn't work. We tried it, and you know what you should do, Melanie. That tastes really good for National Straw Day. When is National Straw Day? January third. So we've missed it. However, maybe for next year, you can make a whole bunch of these straws, and we can like take a photo of us and some of our friends drinking National for National. Oh, Day I love that fancy straws. And by the way, if anybody out there is watching this or listening to this and would like to do that, make a a straw, just like the McDonald's Shamrock Shake straw that I just made, and take a picture of you and your friends doing it. Not 
making the straw, but like drinking out of the straw. The Shamrock Shake is the best because it has all those layers. Please take a picture of you guys drinking the out of that straw and send it to us. I need to see that. And also, I know that there's got to be a straw collector out there. I would love to talk to you about your collection. I'm just curious, like some of the other straws that yeah. might be out there that we didn't If you were a remember. straw collector and you have one of these straws, we need to talk to you. So contact us. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much for... Um, listening to our unusual history of straws. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. We're going to go finish these. Well, I'm going to finish this. I don't know if you will. I Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Remember, follow us on, um, as I slam down emphatically, follow us <laughs> on social media. Subscribe on YouTube, new podcasts and videos every Tuesday. Um, as always, um, our podcasts and blogs can be found on musecuratorial.com, mm -hmm. um, and Muse Stories is actually our, um, basically social media arm of the company Muse Curatorial Consulting Group, uh, where we care for the objects that you love. Yeah. So check out the uh, projects that we do associated with that. Yeah, definitely check us out. We're going to have some really cool object-related stories coming up, so stay tuned for that, and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.